So thank you, Pandey yeah. sir, for this wonderful yeah. opportunity. Uh, the topic for today would be inferior oblique surgeries. Before we go into the actual surgeries, there are two, three things which you need to remember that the inferior oblique actually originates from the uh, floor of the orbital floor of the maxilla. It runs posteriorly backwards and where it gets inserted, it is very closely related to two important structures. One is the macula and the other one is the vortex vein. So these two things should never be forgotten lest when we are hooking the muscle, we can damage these two structures. So this is a video of uh, how we perform a regular inferior oblique recession. The inferior oblique can either be tackled through a fornicial incision, which is given inferotemporally or through a limbal incision. For the beginners, it would always be better if we can uh, hook the lateral rectus muscle initially, which acts like a marker and then followed by that hook the inferior oblique muscle. So this here, we have opened up the fornix part of fornix of the fornix, fornicial incision and this is the direct visualization of the inferior oblique. So if we look through that red bulky structure here forms the inferior oblique. If you want to make yourself sugar, sure, please do hook the lateral rectus. Make sure that you're not hooking lateral or the inferior rectus and then go ahead and hook for the inferior oblique muscle. The hooking of the oblique muscle is usually done by a blunt Stevens hook initially, lest you damage those two important structures which I've already mentioned. Once you hook the muscle, you need to pull it up and see that white triangular structure which is below which shows that the whole of the muscle has been hooked. The white, uh, the seeing of the white triangular uh, st uh, tissue which is present between the two parts of the inferior oblique is an indicator that we can go ahead and uh, proceed with the thing. If you don't see that, that means some amount of the fibers are still left behind. Do go back and search. Otherwise, the recession will never be complete and the inferior oblique overaction can still persist. So once that is done, uh, isolate the inferior oblique from all the surrounding uh, tenons and the tissues which it has been attached and the inferior oblique to perform the inferior oblique disinsertion both the ways can be used it can be cut and then it can be re uh, sutured or it can be sutured and it can be released uh, each surgeon has his own way of performing the inferior oblique uh, recession path so here in this procedure we have just clamped it remember the oblique is very vascular muscle so because of which uh, the clamping to reduce as much amount of the bleeding and then once you cut it we take the we have taken the suture but the other way around can also be done taking the suture and then cutting so the recession there are basically three types of re uh, recession the Finks, the Parks, the Elliot and Nankin so for 1 to 2 plus usually the 1 plus around Finks, 2 to 3 plus Parks and if it is a gross 4 plus Elliot and Nankin and modified Elliot and Nankin both of them are available so where exactly do you place to hook uh, uh, the uh, based on what recession we are performing we can go and take the bite of the inferior oblique to the sclera I'm rushing through because of the short of the time so measure you can see the vortex vein over there in fact where you're taking the hook so this is the mark where I'm performing the inferior oblique recession I take the bite over there and I attach it for the easier uh, uh, understanding this is lateral rectus muscle this is inferior rectus muscle so the Fink's point is somewhere six millimeter be be, uh, beyond and six millimeter below the insertion of the lateral rectus the parks point is three millimeter below and two millimeter uh, away lateral to the lateral border of the inferior rectus muscle and that is used nearly for two to three plus Elliot and Nankin is just beside the lateral border of the inferior rectus muscle and that causes actually bunching up. It can result in something called a J phenomena because of this tight neurovascular bundle which passes through the inferior oblique and can result in anti-elevation syndrome. So use this point, the Elliot and Nankin point only when you are seeing an inferior oblique overaction with unilateral esopalsy or with DVD. It will tackle both inferior oblique overaction as well as the hypertropia. Those cases where there is the extortion is the main component. You can bring the inferior oblique and put it in the medial aspect of the inferior rectus that is known as anteronasal transposition. The other technique which is which really I don't practice much is basically the inferior rectus my inferior oblique myectomy. So it is you need to cut a bit of the muscle before you actually this is not my video I don't personally 
practice inferoblic myectomy. So it's not just cutting and leaving. If you cut and leave, wherever you leave, it goes and attaches over there and it can further cause an inferior oblique overaction again. So you have to remove a 1 to 2 millimeter of the muscle when you are removing off the inferior oblique so that even if it goes and attaches, it doesn't reform it into the actual muscle. But still, over a period of next 2 to 3 uh, years, an haywire inferior oblique activity can appear with a myectomy. So with this, I would like to say that inferior oblique is an enigma. Whatever we have seen till now is just the tip of the uh, iceberg. There are still a lot of things, the vice plate, the uh, strengthening, there are tucking, which are a lot of procedures are still available with the inferior oblique. Time constraints have cut short this. So uh, with this, I would like to end my talk here.